Let's explore convergency, a concept many students find challenging to visualize in navigation. Imagine the Earth with its meridians, those longitude lines running from pole to pole. The middle one for reference is the prime meridian. For our example, let's focus on two meridians, 20 degrees west and 20 degrees east. If you zoom in and examine how these meridians curve on the Earth's surface, you'll notice they aren't parallel. When you mentally place one meridian over another, you can observe an angle forms between them. This angle is what we call convergency, or how DGCA likes to define it. It is the inclination of one meridian over another meridian, or simply the angle formed between two meridians at a given latitude. I have shown you an example somewhere around here, between the poles and the equator. Let's look at an example near the equator. At the equator, zero degrees latitude, meridians appear nearly perpendicular to the equator. If you overlay one meridian on another at this point, they would directly overlap with no angle between them. Therefore, convergency at the equator equals zero degrees. So how do you find convergency? The formula for calculating convergency is Shillong times sine mean latitude, where Shillong is the change in longitude or the difference between the two meridians. Mean latitude is the average latitude of the two positions. Let's say you're traveling from 45 degrees north, 20 degrees east to 60 degrees north, 20 degrees west. To find convergency between these two points, let's find change in longitude. We have two places. 20 degrees east and 20 degrees west. To find total distance between them, add both 20 degrees east plus 20 degrees west equals 40 degrees. This 40 degrees is our change in longitude. It tells how far apart these two lines are. To find mean latitude, add the two latitudes, 45 degrees north and 60 degrees north and divide them by two you get 52.5. Note, a common mistake is mixing up longitude and latitude values. The 20 degrees east and 20 degrees west determine Shillong, while 45 degrees north and 60 degrees north determine mean latitude. Now, if you substitute the values we got, 40 degrees and 52.5 in the formula, we get convergency as 31.5. Similarly, let's find convergency at equator. Let's say you're moving from point A to point B on equator, from 20 east to 20 west. We can find convergency using the same formula. Convergency equals Shillong into sine mean latitude. Here Shillong is again 20 degrees east plus 20 degrees west, 40 degrees. Since we are the equator, our latitude is 0 degrees. So our mean latitude is 0 plus 0 divided by 2, which comes to 0. If we substitute these values, we get convergency as 0. Similarly, let's quickly find the convergency for poles as well. Everything is the same, except the latitude is now 90 degrees. Shillong is again 40 degrees. Mean latitude is 90 plus 90 divided by 2, which comes to 90. If you substitute these in the formula, you get 40 as the answer. Remember how we use the same 20 east and 20 west as example, but we got different values ranging from 0 to 40. Our Shillong value always remains the same. 40 degrees, the only thing that changed is the latitudes. At equator, 40 into sine 0 is 0. This gives the minimum value. At poles, 40 into sine 90 is 40. This gives the maximum value. This happens because the formula uses the sine function. And sine values range from 0 at 0 degrees to 1 at 90 degrees. So even with the same longitude difference, convergency will be smallest at the equator and largest at the poles. And it is a function of sine theta. There are two more formulas.